good? What's poppin'? What's happening with you all? It's your boy Gold Phoenix on the road, and yeah, we out here moving another load, man. Listen, I cannot go into details about this load. Can't tell you where it's going. Can't tell you where it picked up. And you are just gonna have to live with that. I'm not even gonna tell y'all where I'm at right now. Just know I'm rolling. Night rider status, covering miles. I wanted to talk a little bit about the interview I did with Trucker Brown. I gotta say, that was a, a cool experience, man. That was the first time I met him. He kind of just pulled up on me. We backed each other up like, yo, what's good? How you doing? Let's get to work. He pulled out the camera, press record. I wasn't prepared for that, but <laughs> it, was, it was fun nonetheless. I, I have zero complaints about that experience at all. Uh, I know some people disagree with some of the things I say, and they might feel some type of way about it. Like, uh, oh, you're saying owner operators are idiots and all this other stuff. And yeah, some of you are, I'm not gonna lie. Some of you are, but it's not the owning the truck part that's idiotic to me. Though I have my reasons as for why I don't own one. Cause I could go to the dealership and put a bunch of money down on one right now, get one tomorrow if I wanted to, I'm not gonna do that. For me and my business plan as it stands right now, it would not be lucrative to do it. My problem with a lot of owner operators is that ego of theirs. They feel like they they just the big dogs. And, oh, I own my truck. You're an idiot. You're still making payments? Oh my God. Shut up. I don't care. Yeah, I'm making payments. Yeah, I'm making money. Here's another thing. None of you pay my bills. None of you feed me. None of you take care of my essential needs, if you will. And so since I'm responsible for taking care of myself, I'm going to do it my way, period. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong if you want to buy your truck cash. To me, it just depends on what you're doing. And what I was saying was that for me, this is entirely for me, and what I do being OTR, I cannot make sense of owning the truck. It doesn't make sense to me. If I'm gonna buy the truck and then run it OTR and put a bunch of miles on it, going into the Cascades, going over there into uh, uh, the Mojave Desert and, and all kinds of extra stuff, in all weather conditions, snow, rain, sleet, ice, extreme heat. I'm all over the place. To own the truck to me makes no sense. It's too much of a headache. If I'm gonna keep running, it doesn't make sense. Not to mention, it makes even more sense to me to just lease it because I have nothing tying me to my home. I don't have kids, I don't have a wife, I don't have a girlfriend, I'm single out here, I'm just by myself. What the heck am I going home for? I stay out on the road anywhere from eight to 12 weeks. The longest I ever stayed was 16, but I do anywhere between eight and 12 weeks. Usually I average out about 10 by choice. Not because I have to, because I want to. I like to make the money. I like to travel. I, I don't like, you know, since I got into this industry, being in the same place and waking up every day, seeing the same thing all the time, it messes with me. I don't, you know, I gotta be somewhere else got to be doing something different and I like to work I like to keep it moving keep growing you know what I mean now elaborating on the owner operator thing if you are going to buy a truck and you are going to run it somewhat like regionally or something like that we'll take I'm gonna start dropping names screw it I'm gonna just drop names in this one you take somebody like Chase and Andrew Jackson I don't watch his channel like that no shot to him um but you take somebody like him bought a cash truck the last time I looked at his channel I think he was doing the oil field thing or whatever so I'm assuming he's not putting a ton of miles on it not to mention you know I would assume he's somewhat mechanically inclined he knows how to work on the truck to a degree I don't know I don't know him personally I'm not going to disrespect him or anything like that but see for him to go out and buy a cash truck and do that kind of work makes perfect sense I'm not doing what he's doing you take somebody like, uh, oh, what's another one? Uh, sees YouTubers, married couple, uh, Nevada Truck and Trails. They're owner ops or lease purchase operators. And what they do, you know, running out of Las Vegas and stuff like that, running what I assume might be the spot market, they would be better suited to tell you what they do than I am. I don't know. I don't know these people personally. I'm just going purely off of observation. It works for them. Another married couple, take married to the miles. We all know them, right? No idea what they're doing with their truck, but they're owner operators now. And in the 
years I've watched them, if there's one thing I've noticed, it's that Mo and Connie are very calculating in what they do. If they went and bought a truck, then they have to be doing something very, very lucrative. It has to be working for them. That's the impression I get from them. The difference between them and a lot of other people is that those cats don't brag about being better than anyone. They just do what they do. Cats in Nevada, they um, they put information out. Hopefully, it can learn, you know somebody can learn off of it, put it forward, push it forward, keep the train moving. I respect that. Married to the mouth. I don't know what the heck they up to. They're relatively quiet about what they do, but they own the truck. I've watched their journey from Swift to RST to God knows what they're doing now, and they've always played it smart. I respect them. What's, who's another one? Blake Tubbs. Busy Blake. Yeah. That's another one. He's an owner-operator. He paid cash for his brand new Volvo. I think the video he posted, it was like 148000 cash. Me, personally, I wouldn't, have pit, I wouldn't have spent that much money in one asset. Not in this volatile industry. But, with that being said, I don't know what his business plan is. No idea. He might have found a way or figured a way where that could work for him. So if he's willing to take that kind of risk, there is no shots at him because maybe I could learn something from whatever it is that he's doing. But in my opinion, to dump $148,000 cash for me, not saying he's wrong for it, but for me, if I was to drop that much cash into a liability, I just don't think that's smart. But then again, my business plan and his differ clearly so that doesn't mean he's right and I'm wrong it doesn't mean I'm wrong and he's right none of that it doesn't mean nothing I don't disagree with whatever anybody wants to do do what you want do what works for you what I'm saying is when you impose your ideology onto somebody like they're wrong if they're not doing what you're doing I find you to be a moron it's immature it's stupid it's egotistic I don't do that I don't stand for that type of thing Don't just brag if you own your truck. Oh, I got the title and I got this long nose Peterbilt W900 type. You know what I'm saying? What's another one? Uh, older Freightliner Classic. I pay cash for my Columbia. No one cares. We just don't. It does not make you better. All it means is that either one, you can be reckless, or two, you found something that works for you. And if your intention is not to pass that information along so that maybe you could help somebody else do something better for their life, then shut up. We don't care. It's irrelevant. You're irrelevant. And you should probably feel bad about yourself helping you fall down the stairs. That's just where I stand with that. Of course, there's exceptions to every rule. Like everybody I just named right now, I would consider them an exception to the rule, even though Andrew has, you know, gotten on to why you shouldn't lease a truck or whatever. Maybe you could learn something from him. Like I said, I don't know none of them personally, and frankly, what they do with their money and their business, it's not my business. It's just not. I'm staying in my own lane for the most part. I'm just not afraid to talk about what it is that's on my mind. Because I don't care about how you feel. I barely care about my own feelings. I'm a man, I'm a black man in America. Don't nobody care about how I feel. The only thing that matters is what I do, so I do what I do. Simple as that. <laughs> Who cares? You don't have to care about my opinion. You don't have to care about anything I say. That is 100% okay. Just understand the same applies to every single one of you as well. That's just what it is. And that's pretty much everything I had to say. It was on my mind, I was laughing, I was asleep when they went live talking about it. I caught the replay, read the comments, I was, I was cracking up, I'm not gonna lie. But um, with that being said, be happy, stay blessed. Do not be afraid to make drastic changes in your life. Listen people, it might end up being the best decision you ever made. I'm going to close this one out. I'm going to record another video talking about uh, some other things, some I saw in my comments. Personally, I'm going to break it down a little bit without getting too specific. So, I'm going Phoenix and I'm out.